Hey guys, welcome back uh, to KL70C Outdoors. Uh, if this is your first time visiting the channel, uh, or if you're not subscribed, please think about hitting that subscribe button and follow me on all of my Alaska adventures. Uh, I'm extremely excited about today. We're going to do a photo activation. First off, hold up. I am supporting the Black Swan Amateur Radio Club. Thank you guys so much for the shirt. I appreciate it. Love you guys. Uh, it's very nice to meet you guys uh, at Ham Bitchin'. So thank you again for the shirt. But we're doing a photo activation um, at Reflection Lake. So this is part of the uh, the Hay Flats. What is exciting is that uh, Sean and I are going out to the Hay Flats, and we're going to be met by three other folks. Now, one of them is uh, one of our friends, Chris, and he is interested in ham radio. And the other two are uh, one's from Anchorage. Uh, he's a teacher. And then the other gentleman is from Eagle River. Um, I'm wanting to say both of those guys are techs, technicians. Um, so, but they are um, looking into upgrading if they haven't already. And if uh, if you have, I'm sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so we're gonna try to get those guys on the air. Um, do a little bit of Elmering today. So um, that's uh, that's pretty exciting. I love to see that new people are uh, interested in a hobby. And uh, you know they have they have reached out. They live close by, and uh, I think that's just absolutely incredible. All right, you guys ready? Let's go. Alright guys, we have made it to uh, the Palmer Hay Flats. Uh, let me do some introduction. So you guys know Doug. And you know Sean. So, this is uh, Ted. Ted is a, uh, a newer ham. Just got your general, correct Ted? Correct. Yep. Sweet. And you've never played with HL? Never. Never, never played with HL. So that's, that's pretty cool. We're going to get uh, Ted and uh, Adam on the air. We have Adam. Good morning. He is doing, uh, putting out the buddy stick. Now, what's cool, Adam, I, I don't want to mean to put you on the spot, but uh, Adam's a teacher at one of the schools here in Anchorage. And uh, so Adam's a technician, but the last two weeks, can you tell uh, Can you tell him what you did? Yeah, so I'm a teacher at uh, Polaris K-12 in Anchorage. And the last two weeks of the semester, we do intensive courses. And that's where we spend all day with the same group of kids for two weeks. And uh, I was teaching a technician class training course and uh, had 25 kids in that class. Uh, 17 took the official test and eight, almost nine, passed the test. So uh, it was awesome. very exciting and awesome to get to inspire and share with those students. And, you know, looking forward to talking with uh, eight new hams. So That's awesome. Kudos yeah. to you, brother. Kudos Thank you. That, that's what it's all about. And uh, yeah, that's uh, that's flipping awesome. Eight kids. Yeah. What's our age range? Uh, sixth through 12th grade. So. Nice, nice. Yeah. So hopefully we hear uh, a bunch of kids on the, uh, on the VHF, the UHF. The parks and doing yeah. Give them a shout out with their call signs because they've got their call signs. Oh, you already got their call signs. Yeah. Sweet. Uh, several of them. All right, we've got KL5TF. KL5TI, KL5TG, and KL5TH. And then the other students uh, that um, they hadn't quite got their call signs in yet before the end of the class, but yeah. That is awesome. And to you guys uh, that just went through Adam's class that passed the test, congratulations to you. I'm, uh, I'm super pumped that, uh, that you guys did what you did. And thanks again, Adam, for yeah. uh, being that uh, being that person to uh, to do this. That's uh, that's flipping awesome. It looks a little short. Let's see if you had it extended all the way up. I don't think that's extended all the way. Yeah. <laughs> oh, 
taped up there. So our current tap is uh, 20 meters? I believe that's right. Did you put that tap in, Sean? You did it. Huh? I think you did it. Okay. And who, uh, with these, uh, with these antennas, like, um, like this tap is set for 20. And then there's a, there's a cheat sheet that comes in, uh, that comes in, in here. Oh, okay. It, it kind of tells you what, where to put the taps, how long to put the radials for each of the bands. So okay. we're set up on 20, for example, say, um, 19 or I'm sorry I don't have my glasses on I think that's uh was that 13 and then I'll say blue and so this is a counterpoise so this is the other side of the antenna and they have these beads on them so you just extend this out to the blue bead and uh, oh, that's, that's cool. how you change the uh, change the bands basically with the, the counterpoise and then uh, tuning it as well so we'll show you that here in a minute yeah and you just uh, so you can just extend that out and maybe just uh, that general direction down there okay. towards the water how far is he going? Blue? Blue. To blue. So this is a reflection lake. And they call it reflection lake because uh, on a clear sunny day, um, you have the Chugat Mountains that uh, reflects off the lake. So it looks like uh, the mountains are here. So pretty cool. Obviously it's uh, cloudy today, so we can't see that reflection. It would have been nice though if uh, if it was a real sunny day we could have we could have put the drone up and um, and get a good shot of the uh, of the mountains in behind us. You're extending it out to this lane, mm -hmm. but how does this not affect it the lane? It does. It does. Yeah. But this is the counterpoint, so it's not as critical as it. Yeah. And it's yeah. calculated in too. Could get a walking stick, Sean. I've got a. Uh, I should have brought mine. A stick that I usually bring with me. I got a walking stick in the hand. Uh, he's got one. Do. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Just gotta get these. You gotta elevate that way. It doesn't have to be on the ground. No, and sometimes with some, it really depends on the uh, the ground you're on. But sometimes this you have trouble tuning it, so you drop your radio a little. You get it closer to the ground. Okay. And for whatever reason that uh, that seems to uh, help out. So we got a little plethora of uh, radios here. We can experiment with 7300 uh, the H1. Did you bring your 705? I didn't. No. So this is a TX500. This is a QRP rig. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's cool. That's all it is. Wow. <laughs> that's cool. It is cool. Hmm. So it only does 10 watts. Um, I've done a little bit of side uh, side band on that, but it's... Uh, How do you program or use this battery? Yeah, it just has a... Um, cover on it? Oh, that's the cover there? I think so. Yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, look at that. I want to get one of those. Yeah. So I have a... This is a little 3 amp hour battery that I use with it. So you then, can do voice on that? You can, you can. And this is my my CW oh. keyer that it plugs right into the uh, TX five hundred. So awesome! That is cool. I don't know if you guys ever used antenna analyzers before, but whenever, typically when you're at the house, um, you've got your antenna tuned, um, and you don't ever mess with it again. Probably have a tuner at the house, but out here. Um, how we fine tune the, the counterpoise. So we put in uh, what frequency we want to be on. And I think we're going to shoot for uh, 20 meters. I think I usually shoot for like 14, uh, 240, 250, something like that. But I always keep this with me because oh, my memory's not the best. There you go. And that's just a, uh, a bad plan. They had some nice ones up there at the Poda tent. You guys see those? Yeah. They're like mouse pads, little right? mouse pads. Yeah, you're yeah. hanging out down here. They sell them on their site. Yeah, so the, uh, yeah, the so blue represents the. Uh, I might have to pick one up, man. Is it the general? I forget. But uh, yeah, so general class voice is blue. So it would be 14.225 to 14.350 that we're operating on voice. I see. This actually measures uh, a few things, but the main thing that I look for is uh, 
the uh, SWR, which is, Doug, help me out, standing wave ratio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, anything below three you can use. Um, it's not going to put harm on the radio. But the lower you can get it, the more efficient your antenna will be at that point. And you want with 20 because of bad conditions. Yeah. Yeah. 20 pretty much works anytime. Is that right? Yeah. Okay. It's kind of the go-to. Yeah, 20 is our go-to in Alaska for sure. It gets later in the evening, especially in the winter. It kind of goes dead at night. But this time of year now when winter time hits here 10 meters should open up back up and that's just once you experience 10 meters it's like incredible so my swr is 8.3 so when it's really big like that instead of messing with the counterpoise i'll just move the coil tap up or down to get this within like a three or four range on a antenna is what i found then i'll fine tune it the last time we used this with the uh Franken 40? Yeah, the Franken 40. Yeah, so it's probably way off. Yeah, you're, yeah, it is, Sean. We use that to turn up 40 unless you mess with it. 40 with a 17 foot steel weapon. <laughs> Let's see what this means. Sean, you just went up there? Is that what you did? Yeah, I went up. Make sure. It does, uh, it'll make the uh, floor. So it's going from this point to here, and it's using oh, wow. this part of the coil. One point six five. One point six five. So I would just leave that there, and then what I'm going to do is. Oh, here we go. Yeah. He knows. He knows the spot. He knows the magic spot. The sweet spot. You just let out some lines. That we get. One point three nine. Three. Yeah, that's pretty good. One point three two ish. He's going more. Yeah. The name broke. Don't fix it. <laughs> you better leave it. One point two. One point two. <laughs> <laughs> So in Alaska, sometimes it's really good just to plan your activations around the UTC, UTC day itself. Um, so even though we're out here, we're not at our house, we can also play hunter. Uh, we call it hunting and pecking. We'll go up and down the band. You can actually look on the POTA app and see who's out there activating. Maybe we look for Washington State or North Dakota or something like that. If the band conditions aren't good, find out what frequency they're on. We'll tune in a frequency, see if you can hear them, and then uh, we'll give them our call sign, and then we'll get into their logs, and then they'll upload their logs later on in the day, and then we get credit as hunters doing that. Um, also, we would, since we're at a park, we would say park to park, even though we're hunting, and that's another credit that you get. Um, so a lot of people get really excited about you know the park to park activations. So I got the app up here. What happens is if I put someone's call sign in this app, it's gonna you have to have cell service or some type of wireless service. So we'll put Jeremy in here. Gale 7 EC. And then it's gonna look them up and I'll populate uh, their information. Uh, typically, I don't use the, the phone app. Um, but the, when we do a contact, we're gonna give them their report, you know, their signal strength. You can look on here. You, it's perfectly fine to just use your ear and say, that's a really strong signal. I'm going to give them a 5.9, or maybe it's kind of mediocre. I'll give them a 5.5. Five. Um, it might be really hard to understand and just barely, uh, you can barely hear it. Maybe it's a 3.3 three or something like that. So um, so we definitely give the signal reports. Um, some people will just 5.9 and get it over with, kind of like they do in contests, but I like to give accurate signal reports. Um, once we plug in the frequency, uh, once we establish, it'll just save that in your uh, logbook as well, the power you're using, um, the park that you're at. And then what it does, it'll just build the log for you. Uh, so when you can just upload it from your phone or when you go home. Another nice fe feature on this is you'll see as we start making contacts, it'll start plotting them around the globe, wherever they may be at. And so you can kind of see which locations you're hitting 
Um, a lot of the times the East Coast or Texas is really hot for us here, and obviously the, the West Coast as well. The Midwest is typically a struggle for us up here in Alaska. Yeah, there seems to be a null going what I would say once it hits the Midwest, Arizona ish, down to Texas. Yeah. Kansas, Oklahoma, Missouri. So if you get one of those states, um, it's it's a good day. Cool. I think there's less operators in there too. Maybe. The POTA app also has this tab that you can click on, POTA spots, so you can see all the active POTA spots. When we spot ourselves, we'll also show up here. And then of course, like any database or any list or anything, you can go through and filter by bands. Maybe we're on 20 meters and we're not gonna change. We just wanna see who else is on 20 meters. Doug's really efficient at this. He'll look on there and make sure like he's gonna pick a frequency that he's not going over the top of someone else already using that frequency. So that's a good reference as well. So, um, Adam, if you want to go, uh, the only thing is, is just use, uh, you can use uh, mine or Jeremy's call sign, whichever is easier for you to remember. I'm um, KL5ME -E, or Heal Lima 5 November Echo. I can do a recording on here. We can play that. And then uh, oh, wow. you're more than welcome to uh, make the contacts. And then uh, I'll, I'll log them here for you. Okay. Probably just do a couple of them, Sean, just so I can kind of see how how the QSO so goes. Oh, me? Okay. Yeah. So I'm not calling CQ here. I'm just actually going to do the recording so I don't have to do it over and over again. No Alaska either, Doug. Nancy Lake is the name of your recording. Is that what that is? Yeah. It's just going to be the CQ. So what I'll be able to do, um, especially if you're having like a tough day, um, it's easier just to, to hit that than wear out your voice calling CQ all oh, day. And... Um, but if you're, it's a good day, you might play that once, and that's the only time you play it, and then you're just going to get a massive pile oh, wow. possibly. And that's kind of what we're hoping for today, because yeah. those are fun. Yeah. I don't know if you guys seen the, the video where we went to uh, mentioned that last time we yeah, activated cool. on 40 meters. Right after Doug called CQ, you could hear all those people calling at one time. What, 20, 30 people trying to call, maybe even more than that. All at one time, and you just get a, a big blob of nothing, and you got you just got to pick out numbers or letters and then so hopefully we can get one because those are though it makes it fun it does. cq 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 parks on the air this is kilo lima 5 november echo at park us 9701 palmer hay flats in alaska, alaska calling cq parks on the air and standing by then you can play it, see how you sound. CQ, sounds CQ, 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 CQ Parks on the Air. This is Kilo Lima 5 November Echo at Park US 9701 Palmer Hay Flats in Alaska calling CQ Parks on the Air and Danny Bye. That's kind of my thing. It's kind of these guys. It's Sean. Alaska. He always tries to interrupt our CQ calls by yelling Alaska. <laughs> <laughs> So all these are, you can pre-program, I think, eight here. Um, so instead of changing the name, um, I, T1 is what we'll push. It says Nancy Lake, but it's obviously here. Um, now I'm going to make sure this particular frequency is not in use. I'm going to record it here. 14.347. <clears throat> is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Kilo, Lima, 5, November, Echo. And I'm not transferring because I'm on data mode. We just set it for FT8. So now I'm actually there. We go. I'll try to do. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Kilo Lima Five November Echo. I've gotten to where I'll do this twice because as soon as I start on here, it seems like someone creeps in. Or I just doing before. Hmm. I'm at 347. That's the top of the band, isn't it? Yeah. So, yeah, it works. In 3 kilohertz down, right? Yeah. Is this frequency in use? Is this frequency in use? Kilo, Lima, 5, November, Echo. Nothing hurts. Spot it and send it. Spot it. Yeah, if you don't mind spotting it. I'm going to spot it. I can spot it. And sometimes they have, uh, people have triggers set up where... If a, if a spot comes over from Alaska, it gives them a, it gives them alert, text message, email, whatever, however they have it set up. And so if somebody's meeting in Alaska for a state park, um, as soon as Doug spots Sean, 
Um, gotta put that trigger out there, and and then okay, Alaska's on. Let me tune to this frequency so I can try to make a contact. So fourteen three forty seven. Hey, America six, Japan Delta. This is Kilo Lima five November Echo. I have you five nine in the park U.S. nine seven zero one. Five nine, state of Washington. Uh, Roger, Roger. Copy the uh, the five nine from uh, Washington, and uh, I have one more operator if you don't mind standing by. Uh, Roger, go ahead. You can just say your call sign and then give him a signal report as well. So you would call you saying November Alpha Six Juliet Delta. This is your call sign. Okay, then, go ahead. Next up, sir. So just say his call sign. November Alpha 6, Juliet Delta. November Alpha, Alpha 6, Juliet Delta. Delta. And then your call sign. Kilo Lima 5, Sierra Oscar. Kilo Lima 5, Sierra Ocean, you're 59, over. He's telling you 59 as well. You're 59, thank you. Uh, thanks for Park 9701, good luck. Awesome. Well, sweet. This is Kilo Lima 5, November Echo at Park US 9701, cures it. Down, nine to go. <laughs> and then I didn't hear nothing, so I'm... Kilo, Kilo 7, Echo Lima Zulu. You want Adam to this one? Uh, Kilo, Kilo Station, one more time. Kilo, Kilo 7, Echo Lima Zulu. Kilo, Kilo 7, Echo um, do you want to call him back? Sure. And then just use my call sign. So you just go his call sign and then Kilo Kilo 7 Echo Lima Zulu. This is Kilo Lima 5 November Echo. Kilo Lima 5 November Echo. Got you at a 5 9 from Park US 9701. Okay, uh, Kilo, uh, one more time with the uh, call, please. Kilo Lima 5, November Echo. Kilo Lima 5, November Echo. Okay, Kilo Lima 5, November Echo. Have you on a 5353 into Ford, Washington? Roger, Roger, copy. Thank you for the 53 out of Washington. Stand by for a second after. Thank you. Uh, stand by for a second operator. There's his call sign, and then give you your call sign, and then the signal report. Kilo Kilo 7 Echo Lima Z Zulu. This is Kilo Lima 5 Sierra Oscar. You're a 5 9. Perfect. You're still on the 5 9. I also have you 5 3 into Ford, Washington. Awesome, guys. Roger, roger, my friend. 7-3, this is Kilo Lima 5, November Sweet. Echo at Park US 9701, QRZ. Takes me a while to get over the mic, so... Yeah, I, yeah, uh, that's what I was going to rules. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> you can say, how's the, how's the day? You know? It's ham radio. There's, it's not like... Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Don't, don't worry about the, the whole map crop thing. It, we, we all had it. We were all there. So after a couple of them, it'll, it'll just come down. In Alaska, calling CQ Parks on the air and standing by. So we have Chris as well. Chris is very interested in uh, ham radio. So uh, we're going to get him on the air. And uh, hopefully he can uh, get his take lessons. And standing June. by. Kilo Lima 5, November Echo, QRZ. November. Alpha India 7, Romeo Kilo, park to park. Uh oh, park to park. Yes. So you're going to say Alpha India 7, Romeo Kilo. I have you 5 9 in a high park for me, Charlie. Or Romeo Kilo. Was it Romeo Kilo? Alpha India 7, Romeo Kilo, park to park. Good. Yeah. Uh, QSL, Alpha India 7, Romeo Kilo. Got you to 5-9 into Park 9701. Yeah, QSL, QSL, I got you at 5-9. Great audio coming down here in Washington. Uh, I am at Park US 3166. 3166. 
Say QSL, QSL. Not QSL, QSL. <laughs> <laughs> Two more. Okay. Thank you for the park to park and uh, Two more uh, stay warm and dry up there. Yeah, stand by for two more operators, please. Okay. Uh, Chris? Yeah, standing by. So you're going to use Jeremy's call sign. Just say. You're going to say Alpha India 7 Romeo Kilo. This is KL7 Echo Charlie. I have you 5 9. This one? Yeah, Alpha India 7 Romeo Kilo. Alpha, Alpha India 7 Romeo Kilo. This is KL7 Echo Charlie. I've got you at 5 7. Uh, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie, was that? Uh, Kilo, Kilo Lima 7, Charlie? Correction, Echo Charlie. Echo Charlie. Correction, Kilo Lima 7, Echo Charlie. There we go, I got that correction. Kilo Lima 7, Echo Charlie. 5-7, uh, five, seven, uh, five, uh, five, seven both ways, coming into uh, Mark the US 3166. Say 7-3, uh, my friend, stand by for one more operator. 7-3, my friend, stand by for one more operator. Sweet. Right on, brother. Right, what this call? Say Alpha India Seven Romeo Kilo. This is your call, and then five seven at my park. Alpha India Seven Romeo Kilo. This is Kilo Lima Five. Kilo Lima Five. Your Sierra call. Oscar. And say. Kilo. Five. Lima 5, Sierra Oscar, uh, I got you a 5-7 here into my part, the US 3166. Say 5-7 as well. Thank you. 5-7 as well, thank you. We had an absolute blast. Ted, Chris, and Adam, all three did a absolutely astonishing job being first time on HF. Um, there was a little bit of muck froth uh, in there, but you know, that that's part of it. We all had it. We were all there at one time, so, so no worries there. Um, but it was just an absolutely fun time. Um, I hope everybody had fun. I know this is a, a little longer video than what I usually do. Um, so if you're watching this to the end, I should appreciate it. Another shout out to the Black Swamp Amateur Radio Club. I should appreciate it. Thank you guys so much for watching. And until next time, 7-3.